If a fighter is efficient in capitalizing on his opponent's mistakes, then the fighter can beat most opponents and possibly make it all the way to the championship level. But fighters that are efficient at forcing their opponent's mistakes can potentially become world beaters. This two-part series is about control and manipulation in the boxing ring. In boxing, you're constantly defending or attacking. There is a counter for everything in boxing, so as you punch, you're taking the risk of being counterpunched. Although there are many other applications, a highly skilled control game acts as, in my opinion, the safest transition between offense and defense. Let's get into it. Again, in my humble opinion, the master of the control and manipulation game, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Controlling your opponent's hand or glove serves a multitude of purposes. In the same instance, you're defending and at the very least limiting the option of the hand you control while affording yourself the capabilities and positioning to attack. Backhand control is typically limited to an opponent who is squared to you. Squared meaning the relatively same distance from you across your opponent's shoulders. This form of control is a good way to set up offense without a backhand threat and a great way to safely step and reposition towards the strong side or backhand side and avoid or limit a squared opponent's strongest punches. In the open stance, the typical control hand is still the lead hand. Well, the lead hand is now aligned with your opponent's lead hand, which is always front and centered, no matter if your opponent is squared or bladed in their opposing stance. The lead hand is the all-important jab hand. The jab is widely recognized as the most important punch in boxing, so to take the jab away with control is a gigantic feat. Your opponent is essentially left with three options, either punch through the traffic with the lead hand, move, which is probably the safest bet, or strike with the backhand. Of course, the fighter with the high boxing IQ using open stance lead hand control is fully aware of your options, which makes it easier for that fighter to defend, which is typically a slip and encounter if you choose to strike. A good lead hand control game in the open stance is a clear staple amongst the highest skilled fighters. The advantages of limiting or taking away a jab is probably the most debilitating chess move in boxing. Controlling your opponent's head is typically reserved for an easy transition to defend against a counter or allow a fighter to move into a more favorable position in the boxing ring. After you strike with the single punch or combination, the natural reaction is the counter from your opponent. Controlling the head can limit the visibility of your opponent and or limit the options for counters. The two often go hand in hand because if you can't see what you're punching, you're more reluctant to punch and your equilibrium can be thrown off, which distorts everything. In a boxing ring, being against the ropes restricts backwards or lateral movement depending on the spot. Using head control after you or your opponent's strike is a relatively safe way to escape the unfavorable position. Head control can also be used for offense as, of course, visibility in combat sports is of the utmost importance. Blinding your opponent for even a split second still has the benefits defensively as aforementioned, while also granting opportunities to attack. 
forcing your opponent's head into a favorable position with head control to attack is obviously an efficient way to land significant blows. Part two is gonna be about framing and the highest levels of guard manipulation. Smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Stay tuned.